In today's video, I build a huge logging camp that produces every type of wood. I also fix up my rail systems with the help of crazy machines, as well as accidentally appearing in someone else's world. Oh no. How did that happen? Let's create. As usual, I started by doing some work off camera. What about Mr. Beardstone? Oh geez, hang on, we'll get to that in a minute. My rail system sucks, and as I mentioned before, I wanted to fix it. Starting with getting that hideous slope part off the mountain and creating a flat route around the mountain using a giant block to destroying machine, which I aptly named the destroyer. But let's rewind a little bit. I started by removing the existing track and then using the portable drill to cut a path around the side of the mountain, laying down a winding track through the gully that I created. But I needed this as a set of two tracks because, well, we'll get to that later. So I made everything twice as wide and tried my best to lay the two tracks side by side with matching curves. Then came the destroyer, which used so many mechanical drills I needed to grab some more resources in order to craft so many. With the destroyer built and ready to go, I drove along the new track, demolishing the landscape mess I'd left above and carving out the side of the cliff next to the rail. But then I had to smash it all to bits in order to make a similar machine with less height that would carve a tunnel shape through the mountain. At this point, I knew I wanted one of the tracks to divert around the ravine towards the village on the other side, so I added some more track in that direction and used a smaller destroyer to make space for future trains running on that track. Next, it was time to bring back out the portable drill, continuing to dig through the mountain going upwards to meet with our existing tunnel up at the ski resort. But then, again, I decided I wanted two tracks going up through the mountain, but as I said, we'll get to that later. With a small tunnel in place inside the mountain, I connected the track up before modifying the destroyer again to create a tunnel large enough and wide enough for two tracks to run through. I then proceeded to drive along this track, carving out a massive tunnel all the way up to our existing track at the top. With the tunnel in place, it was time to modify the destroyer again, this time adding a bunch of rollers that would replace the blocks underneath the track with gravel, mainly because it just looks better. I drove through again, placing the gravel all of the way through, then I fixed the track at our ski village station, doubling the up and connecting them all the way down inside the mountain to the ravine at the bottom. Now that I had a complete track circuit, I instructed the conductor of the Flying Fox to travel back and forth from Hill Valley to the ski resort, and I even had a little ride myself to check it out. But this was no time to take a break, there was more work to be done! The next task was to create tunnel entrances at each end of the mountain tunnel using variations of tough blocks and blending it into the slopes on either side. But wait! The wandering trader- Oh wait, no, never mind. With the tunnel entrances complete, the next job was to fix the landscaping around the flat part of the track going around the edge of the ravine, which meant tearing down trees, digging out some stone and granite, and then placing a bit of dirt. Now, I didn't want to get too carried away here. Eventually, I'd like more detail in the cliff, but for now, my focus was getting the track and the edge of the ravine looking a little better. I then decided to play with train signals. I placed them along the track, splitting it into sections that I thought were appropriate. The idea of signals is they prevent multiple trains being on the same section of track at once, which prevents accidents. However, as a large chunk of my track, particularly towards Hill Valley, was single track, I couldn't understand why the Flying Fox kept refusing to go. That's when it dawned on me that train signals also dictate the direction of the track and a train can't travel in the opposite direction of the signal, which meant that entire single section of track towards Hill Valley couldn't have signals on. So I'd have to add another track next to it to double it up. See, I told you I'd get there eventually. Before I started adding in another track, however, I wanted to fix the wibbly wobbly track section coming off the bridge, which meant rebuilding the end of the bridge to curve earlier and then relaying the track along the edge of the ravine. With a little jiggery pokery and a helping hand from yet another modified version of the destroyer, it was all coming together nicely. I reconnected all of the track, creating a much nicer curve, blending it into the side of the ravine, and then demolished the small hill next to the track, throwing on some trees to flesh it out a little. Now, finally, it was time to add in that second track. After connecting the track all of the way to the tunnel entrance at Hill Valley, I added signals that actually worked, and then cleared it all up using the destroyer to add gravel and slope the edges with dirt. Now, the Flying Fox was much happier with the signals, and it set off again and continued its schedule without issue. Which brings us to now. Now, can we see the Mr. Beardstone thing? Uh, not yet. Oh man. So in the last video, we built this big old gondola station and we built a whole bunch of cable cars. And the idea is this is going to be the collection system for our wood farm, which is going all the way over here and doesn't exist yet. But before we get too far into wood farms and things like that, I had a few come. Oh, geez, I need one of these cars. Stop it. Stop moving. Give me your schedule, thank you. Yes, I've had some comments about these cable cars. Now, you might remember from my last video that one of the things I said I don't like about these cable cars is the fact that they don't pivot. They don't hang with gravity from their little connection. They just sort of sit at this funny angle, which I don't really like. But thanks to some amazing people in the comments, I think we might be able to solve this problem. And let's find out. We'll start by disassembling this train. And basically, what I was told was that if I connect this instead with the mechanical bearing, so let's, I guess, put that gantry 
country bid on there instead and remove that one and make this look a little bit better, perhaps, like that. That I could set this so that it would always just swing, but I don't think that's how these work. But what do I know? Let's find out. So if I assemble the train, there we go, cable car four, you have been assembled, and I jump in here, it's all still attached. Will it just swing when we get to an angle? Whoa, let's try and go the right way, that would help. And the answer is no. It doesn't just swing when you get to an angle. Hmm. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Huh. Disassemble it again. Figure out what I'm doing wrong here. So just quickly reading the comments back, it says, If the entire cable car contraption is connected to the bogey itself only by a mechanical bearing, you can change the behavior of the bearing to enable the contraption to ignore rotation and function like a real cable car. And that's what I thought I'd done. So clearly I've done something wrong. Perhaps I need to remove some of this glue. And then if I just glue this bit to that bit there... Oh, my glue's run out. Maybe that'll work. Ah, yeah. You see, the bogey has to be attached to the train in order for it to recognise that there are controls attached to it. So now I can't assemble the train because it's not attached to the bogey, and the only way I could get around that would be to add controls and a seat and the conductor up there next to the bogey, and that's just not going to work. So sadly, thank you very much for those comments, but those comments not going to help me, mate. And now, frustratingly, I can't actually put this back together because I've run out of glue. Can I craft any glue? I can! Oh, this is good news. Here we go. That should be stuck together now. Let's reassemble the train. Cable car four. You can have your schedule back now, sir. Ah, let me out, though. And off he goes. Straight into that. Oh, jeez. Good job, Cable Car 4. That's it, there we go. Right, no more crashing. Jeez. Right, anyway, if you weren't paying attention or if you didn't see the end of the last video or maybe you didn't see the last video at all, at the end of it, I ended up going to a whole new world by accident, of course, using my DeLorean. And in that world, I meet Mr. Beardstone. What the, where, what? What's going on? What's this train? I haven't even got anything to crash into. Oh, Is I that can a hear DeLorean? Someone. What in the Oh, oh no. no. Hello. Really? You appear to have parked your train into my DeLorean, Mr. Beardstone. Well, no, 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 no. You've... I've got so many questions. One, why is there a DeLorean? Two, how is there a DeLorean? Three, how is there a Foxy? Well... Um, I can't answer many of those, but all I can assume is after I gave this a couple of upgrades, it went a little bit fast and now I'm here. Well, it's it's okay. I can just, you know, get it back on the track. You've killed my driver. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> Who knew building a DeLorean and going really fast would teleport you to someone else's world? Yeah, strange though, isn't it? It is very strange. Mm. Um, well, while I'm here, yeah, I've had a few people um, in my comments telling me that they think I'm copying you, Mr. Beardstone. Really? Yeah. Should we see if we can figure this out? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. I mean, I'll tell you what, because, you know, I, I created this world, my, my, my perfect world, but it is missing one thing, Foxy. Yeah. Friends. Oh. Well, it's a shame you haven't gotten any, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Uh, have you got a clipboard? I, I do have a clipboard. Uh, yeah, we go, grab ourselves a couple of clipboards, and I think if we go over to your starter area, I've got an idea. Oh, no. Okay, Mr. Beardstone, I have this clipboard, and on this clipboard, there are a lot of things that I've built that I don't think you've built, and I suggest that you should get a clipboard and do the same. And what we'll do, I'm going to go through my clipboard, see if you've built the same things as me to work out if you're actually copying me, and then you can go through the list of things on yours, and we'll figure out if I'm copying you. Sound like a plan? Sounds amazing. That sounds, sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, okay, let me make a list. Right, there we go. Right, okay. I'm going to go through my list. Are you ready? All right. All right. Do you have an andesite farm? No. A dripstone lava farm? Yeah, kind of. A dripstone lava farm that uses dripstone? Y yeah, yeah. Do you? Huh. Yeah, I do, yeah. Right, yeah. I'm just going to cross that one off. A uh, wool farm? Uh, no. A uh, factory that makes ridiculous amounts of cobble, gravel, sand, salt, sand, iron, flint, gold, quartz, and clay. N no. I mean, just, just a cobble factory count? No. A ski resort. A what? A ski resort. No, I don't have a... Do you see any snow? Uh, a gondola station? No. A hot springs? No. Your place sounds wonderful. It doesn't sound like you've done very much at all. What, a kelp farm? <laughs> no, I haven't even got a kelp farm yet. No. <laughs> and, uh, and a hotel. And you've got a hotel. Yes. I, I certainly don't have a... Does that mean you can have guests? Well, I haven't got any rooms yet. But apart from that, no. uh, on the outside, it's a hotel. Well, look, I've, all these things on this list, there's one sort of kind of maybe. So clearly, you're definitely 100% not copying me. 
So, oh, no, of course not. No, no. Yeah, no. I feel pretty good about that. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, well, what about what's on your list? Uh, right, okay. So, I, I haven't put everything I've built on here. Right. I've, I've just made a, a, just, I've picked some random stuff. Right. So, uh, well, I've made, a, I've made a starter house. Yeah, yeah, I've got a starter house, yeah. Uh, I've made a, I've made a train station. In fact, I've made a few. This is like one of about four. Yeah, I've got, I've got a little train station. I've got a horse. I don't think that counts as making a horse, but I do have a wonderful horse over there. Yeah, I've got a horse, yeah. Get out of the wall! Get out of... Oh, no, I'm in the wall! Uh, I, built a, I, I built a tree farm. Yeah, I've got, li I've got a little tree farm. Yeah. Let's go, let's go to the train farm. Okay. The, uh, the train's, the train's going to be here in... Uh, uh, my board's gone a bit weird. Uh, it says one minute and then four minutes for me. Oh, well, let's wait for a train. That's something else I've built. I built, I built a wonderful train. Uh, but my, my train's not too bad. So, uh, yeah, this is this, this, this is my tree farm. So I built, I built, built a little tree farm. Yeah. That's this thing. What? Mm. It's, um, right, have you got anything else that you've built that I might not have built? How about a portable workshop? Yes, I, I've, got, I've got, it's, um... Hmm, you've got, got a portable workshop, have you? I do! Right. A little, a little bit bigger than mine. Um, anything else on your list there? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I built a big bridge, but you've already seen that. Yeah, you've seen the bridge. Any, anything else? Uh, I built a mechanical lift. Ah, well, that one, Mr. Beardstone, I have to admit, I did see your video on that mechanical lift, and I decided I needed to have one, and no matter how much I tried to make it completely different from yours and put my own spin on it, it looked, it was, it, it was exactly the same. Oh, right, I see. Yeah. Like that, is it, Foxy? Um, wow. But it was so good, and it was a you inspired me to build an identical one, but slightly differently. Oh, that, that's good to know. Yes. You know, I mean, inspiration is a good thing, right? Yes, exactly, yes. Cool. I mean, the important thing is, like, you haven't built a story proper storage system yet, right? I've got one of them as well. You've got a storage system? Yeah, I've yeah, got, yeah, I've got yeah, a storage yeah. system, yes, yes. Very nice storage system. We've got lots of, lots of storage in it for things. You got a nice one, have you? Yeah, it's all right. Do you want to go see it? It's pretty so big. Well, this is like main central storage, Foxy. Did it? So all the trains come in. They're all automated. They come in. They drop everything off. It goes over here, and then there's a little chicken train. He drives about, and he brings it all over here. No, no, don't kill, don't kill my. Pardon? What? What? Oh, I just it doesn't work very well. This storage system, does it? Well, mine works right, very I'll... nice. Did lots of conveyors oh. and things. There you go. I have a new driver. No. Like, so cute. But either way, I'm not happy about that, Foxy. Right, come on. Go on. I'm, 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 I'm done. I think we've uh, we've established that everything I've built, you have actually built. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, but different. Different, right? It's true. It's true. It's very it's very different, Foxy. Okay. Um, and I did basically tell you to play Create as well. You did. Let's, let's be perfectly honest with the viewers right now. Yes, a lot of the things that Mr. Beardstone's made, I've also made because Mr. Beardstone, for a long time, was kindly pestering me, telling me you should play the Create mod. I was. So I did. He told me what mods to play, which I should do, how I should set up my world, and I did. And I'm very glad I did. And I watched all of Mr. Beardstone's videos, and they're all fantastic. And of course, when you've got all of that information going in, and that's your only source of information, you're going to be like, oh yes, that's a good idea. How can I put my own little spin on that? And apart from your mechanical lift, I think I've done a pretty good job of making sure mine's completely different from yours. Yeah, no, I think it is. I mean, the, the only thing I'd say that's the same is the fact that we're both playing the same game. Yes, with very, very similar mods. So yeah, Foxy, I have actually been watching your series as well, and um, you've got that hotel, you've got the hot springs. It's all getting very, very fancy over yes. there. So when are you taking taking bookings? Is, well, that, is that a thing? Are you taking I don't bookings? want to give you some work. Uh, to do because that would be rude of me but uh, you're good at interiors and I'm awful and my hotel's pretty much bare on the inside so if you would like to come see it anytime you'd like you can come stay in there as long as you want you can go on my chairlift you can go on the hot straight springs mm -hmm. but I would really appreciate if you could just throw me a couple of intern interiors together 
Right, yeah. I see. You just I have see. to do one room. I hate doing it. I hate doing interior. Look, do you, want, do you want to see my interior? Your interiors well? are always wonderful. Do you want, yeah. Do, 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 do you want to come see yeah. this interior? Oh, geez, I am copying you. Mine's identical. <laughs> <laughs> right, get off my world, Foxy. Go on. Away with you. Take your DeLorean. Thanks for having me in your world, Mr. Beanstone. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, God, hang on a minute. <laughs> oh, he's coming back. <laughs> what? Hey, hey, Foxy, welcome back. I've already been and come back again. You won't believe it. It's your kids, Beanie. It's your kids. Oh, no, the train is still here. Look out. No, stop. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I need new brakes. Oh, jeez. Mr. Beardstone, well, before we leave Mr. Beardstone's rather perfect world, I want to come to his wood farm because, as you know, in today's video, I'm going to be building a wood farm. And due to today's conversation about copying each other, I want to make sure that I'm not going to get in trouble again. So let's look at the way this wood farm works. There is a gantry shaft here with a gantry platform, a little bit like what I did with my kelp and my crop farms. And this has a load of mechanical saws on either side. And inside, you can see there are some deployers. Now, these deployers are planting saplings in very specific location you can see they're marked out with these blocks here to make sure that the trees all grow in the right sort of places and everything works well and it makes a lot of sense the machine works in both directions making the most of the whole situation then it drops off all of the wood into this area here and this wood goes into this vault through there and then goes into this section which all makes a lot of sense the wood then comes out of this vault up these conveyors down into here and if mr beardstone had saws on here which was his original plan some of them would then get stripped they'd go up into this section here into this vault and then there's a little train running around here which basically takes everything off puts them into those vaults to be collected by his main storage train otherwise known as his logomotive which also makes a lot of sense in fact this whole farm just makes a lot of sense he's got all of the different types of trees he's got an amazing efficient mechanism for chopping them down and replanting them he's got a really good system for getting them away from there and then into a separate system to deal with them and then they go off to the storage thing so it all just makes a lot of sense and if i'm not going to copy mr beardstone with what I do, I guess I need to make something that doesn't make a lot of sense. That does not make yeah. Well, let's start with this system here, the gantry system for planting lots of trees. Obviously, we're going to have to do something completely different from what Mr. Beardstone's doing here. And I think I've got an idea. Stop zooming in. Now, there is one part of Mr. Beardstone's wood farm that doesn't make a lot of sense, and that is he's only actually collecting half of the trees. And I don't mean half of the trees as in this farm only works for half of the things he's planted. Oh my goodness me, look how they grow. <laughs> I mean half the trees as in he's getting the wood, but he's not getting any of the leaves. I wonder if we can solve that problem. But if you get the leaves, you won't get the saplings and they won't regrow. Yeah, but I don't need all the leaves, but I would like quite a lot of them. So I guess it's time to go back to my world and actually figure all of this out. Which means finding my DeLorean, waiting for trains. Oh, jeez, it's just waiting for trains constantly in this world. And one's just here. Oh, it's going again. Wait, I missed the train. Oh, jeez. I'm going to be here for a week. So back on my world and looking at this mod pack, there are actually 11 types of sapling in this world and there's the mangrove propagule. Now I've only managed to collect nine of the saplings and that's because I haven't found ancient oak and I haven't found blighted balsa. But we don't need to worry about those just yet. So I need to make this area capable of dealing with all 10 types of sapling that I currently have with room for more in the future. And I'm not gonna be making straight lines. In fact, he says, making the world's longest journey to prove a point. I'm gonna be taking a leaf out of our existing book and making something a little bit more spinny and now i've got to make that oh i can take the train back but that'll only take me halfway but at least that's some of the journey i'm ready for a lift not like mr beardstone's world when they only come every 30 minutes might come every couple of minutes it's very good be nice if you had some carriages i don't I'll, I'll, I'll make carriages at some point now before we can make spinny things we're gonna need power and we're also gonna need a nice big flat area to build this so i guess it's time to do even more landscaping oh geez get me shovel out however if i get this shovel out this will be a good opportunity to get some grass i never have any grass no, whoa wow there's a lot of grass
Well, that's a lot of landscaping, and not just over there, but I sort of tidied up that area as well next to the cable car, although I'm sure I'm going to need to do more over there at some point, and you might be able to figure out what my little plan is here, or at least some of it. Each one of these little logs is going to be one of these spinny, roundy little things that chops down trees, so each one of these areas is going to have a unique type of tree. And there's way more than 12. And that's not really by design. I just wanted more than 12 so we can double up on some trees that give you less. And that was kind of what I could fit into this area. Now, these gravel parts are going to be how we're collecting the items. And there's a couple of ways we could do that. We could have these machines spitting out their items onto a conveyor and sending everything forward. Or we could have a train going round and round and round picking it all up, which I think will be fun. Oh, it's definitely not like what Mr. Beardstone did. Although he did use a track. No, he didn't. Not in this bit. So I suppose the next thing I need to do is get these things actually plumbed in. And for that, I'm going to need power. And as we mentioned in the last episode, these little gondola cars, these cable cars, whatever you want to call them, are going to be bringing us in some lava. Ugh. And I can't get in to show you. Let me in. I just want to go in that. Oh, jeez. Because each one of these contains a lava tank as well as a barrel. So that they can carry both. <laughs> but there's a couple of problems with that. The first being, I don't have any way of unloading the lava at this end. Oh, there we go again, all the way over there. I'm winning! Snooze you lose, mate! And the second being, I don't have any way of getting any lava in at this point here, because we don't have any lava over here. The lava is over here and down there but we do have a lava train and here it is look coming here to pick up the lava now i had an idea peeps my idea is to take this lava train and give it two stops instead of just one so it's going to go through the mountain here it's going to pop out down here at the power station unload half of its lava and then they want to extend this track around this area here maybe even going under a waterfall around all of this bit here over the top of this bridge down the side of the gondola building and then load in some lava into the underneath part of this and then and pump it up into the cable cars that way which is going to be quite a lot of work oh geez why do i do this why don't i just make things simple and have a windmill or a water wheel oh my goodness me and that's exactly what i'm going to do for now because realistically it's going to be a long time getting all of that lava stuff set up and that train relocated and all of that so for now just to get this farm up and running i'm going to use a water wheel but before we can put a water wheel in let's might as well get all of these structures in figure out how we're going to plant the trees so first things first we're going to need a whole bunch of mechanical bearings and i'm going to place each one of these in the middle of these squares now i know i could do something ridiculous and just have one mechanical bearing in the middle of all this and just have a really long thing that spins round but that's not going to be as exciting it'd be really exciting it'd be very dangerous very dangerous don't do dangerous things here we go our last one is going in there we go we've got mechanical bearings in every single one of those now and now i need to link up power underneath them all so i've got some digging to do and with this last couple of gearboxes that should be every single one of these farms now connected with shafts just bear in mind this power is temporary but now that should be plenty of power if i put that on there like that and turn this back on it should start spinning there we go and that's way too fast but it's fine so i've got one of our little mini farms in place now and i could build this over and over and over again over all of these things or i could use a schematic and i think that's the smart thing to do now i don't know if this exact design is going to work for all of our farms but if i take away these saplings here you will see just with two deployers it will replant the whole lot and certainly for this spruce these three saws should be capable of cutting through everything well, i'm a little bit concerned about the things with bigger roots like mangroves how do i turn these guys off you just get in my way while i'm building you don't pose any sort of threat. You just give me bad omen and it's annoying. Go away. Oh, what was that I got? Oh, maybe you can stay cladded chest plate. Let's make a schematic and quill. Uh, okay, so I'm going to need to remove a bit of gravel. That one there, all the way up to this one here, and that should get everything in that box there. So now when I click it, I can put wood farm. If I now create a brand new schematic, put a table down, put the schematic on there, select our wood farm, click the tick button. There we go. And now I've got a schematic of the wood farm, and I can just place that on any of these, get it lined up, stick it on there, drop it down, and then there we go. We're ready to place that. So I just need the schematic cannon stick the cannon down there stick a table next to it stick a barrel next to it for storage click that in there put in a bit of gunpowder and now i need a clipboard again oh geez clipboard yeah I, I meant clipboard i didn't mean clickboard and i need all of these things times a million oh it actually wants the spruce saplings oh i forgot it had spruce saplings in it of course yeah we don't want that Let's start again now our material checklist yeah that's much better okay well i've got all of those things so how does that get us on with our checklist what are we missing nothing go and it can reach all the way from over there 
This is fantastic. We're going to have these farms done in no time. Things are going well. I've been placing things in. The Wandering Trader has even turned up to see what's going on, which could be a problem. And this is now stopped building. What are you missing? Linear chassis. There you go. Have a bunch more of that. I've only got 21. And I've been going around basically sorting a few of these things out. You see, this one's going to be oak. And oak saplings can all place next to each other. So I've got rid of some of the bricks and joined all that together. So that can just do a continuous row of oak. Spruce obviously can't do that. That needs to be separated. So I'm leaving that as it is. And I think birch works like oak and can go all next to each other as well. So I've done this one like that. Jungle, again, I'm going to have as the four spots, just like the other ones. And then acacia, I'm pretty sure can all grow next to each other as well. But I don't know if that will cause problems with getting enough saplings back. So we'll have to see. Over to this one, we've got dark oak. Again, we're going to have the four spots for that. And now this one's finished. This is going to be cherry blossoms. And now this next one is going to be swamp cypress saplings. And I have absolutely no idea how that grows. I've also not no idea how willow saplings grow. And I'm not really sure how mangrove trees are going to work. Because they can grow all over the place. And now, now what have you run out of? Gunpowder. Oh, yeah, fair enough. There you go. Have a bit more. No, I do realise I could get a whole bunch more saplings out of each one of these things. And this is definitely not the most efficient way to have a massive wood farm. But realistically, there's only me playing on this world, so I really don't need all of the wood in the world. In fact, our little spinny one of these back at home has got me more wood than I think I'll probably ever use in this Let's Play. So having way too much just means I've got more to store and then more to void into the voiding drawers. So I think what we've got going on here is going to be absolutely fine. And is that one finished? Have you done another one, sir? You have. Okay, have the next one. So mangrove propagules. How do these grow? These grow, as far as I'm aware, kind of a bit all over the place. And what I need to make sure that happens is that when the machine tries to chop it down, we've actually got enough saws in place to get through all of the roots for the machine to actually successfully chop it down. So I'm just going to plant these few propagules here, see how they grow, see what happens with that, and then, well, try and make one of these platforms fit it, I guess. But I've got a feeling I'm going to end up with a longer chassis on here and a whole bunch more saws for the propagules. Oh dear, this could be a problem. My mangrove sapling has grown and it's grown outside of my little square that means it might not be able to get chopped down very well but that now means everything is pretty much done which is absolutely fantastic so i can now turn on the machine and see what happens now, a bunch of these are going to be turning on even though they've got nothing in them but the most of them should start planting oh and we need oh yes we need to fix the directions that everything on this line's going the right way and everything on that line's going the right way but everything on this line's going the wrong way and with a little bit look when i pop my head up everything should be going in the right uh, well everything what now what have i what how are the what oh jeez <laughs> oh it looks like our spruce one's full already <laughs> i might have to stop this until we've got time to actually work on the rest of this area <laughs> because i've got a whole bunch more to do not only have i got to organize the item pickup and collection system for this thing i also need to find a way of grabbing at least some of the leaves see my idea was pretty simple I was just going to add a few blocks onto these at the height that you would roughly, generally on average, expect the leaves to be, and then just stick on a deployer with a pair of shears and put that into use mode, and then that will use that as it's spinning round and it should collect us some leaves. Now the shears will run out over time of course, but we could add a system in here to actually put shears into it. I then started working on the collection system and I made a total mess of it. I added loads of track, created 14 stations and then put together a system that would link up the farms, take out the items using the combination of vaults, item drains and conveyors to move everything to the front, which the train would then collect and deposit at a vault to the side. But this still didn't even include any mangrove wood and it was getting messier and messier and the trees were starting to stick to the chassis and it was just becoming a big problem. And I spent absolutely hours tweaking it and changing it and testing it and trying to get it right. But I'm not really happy with it. So I decided to stay up till the early hours of the morning, completely ripping pretty much everything out and starting again. And as a result, we've got a completely different system going on here. Even with these walls. I moved all of the shorter growing trees to the front section here, replaced the linear chassis with oak plants to stop all of the leaves and things from sticking to it. And then I created this train on a single track, which harvests the leaves instead of the individual machines harvesting the leaves and that means that on that side we've got some really tall ones to deal with the really tall trees. I also took two away from the end so that we've got four in each row making the whole collection systems a lot easier and because all of the mechanisms underneath are a lot simpler now I've been able to add in speed controllers to speed up the belts which means the whole chopping system can go slower allowing the leaf harvesters to actually harvest leaves before the trees get chopped down. I've added in two lines of mangrove choppers and a whole new train for that which saws it down, harvests the leaves and then replaces the mangrove probably 
eagles, but you might notice there's one minor problem with all this, and that's it's missing a couple of sapling types. I say a couple, I mean one. It's missing the willow saplings, which I'm actually just going to use on this bit instead of these proper gules here, which means I do need to stop this train. Oh, geez, too late. So that I can disassemble it in order to replace the proper gules on there with those. All right, you can go off again. Excellent work. Good job, sir. So not only is this a whole bunch better, but the output system's a whole bunch better too. Everything's now going inside of this vault here, which is getting kind of full. So all I need now is a system to take all of the items from that vault over there, run it through some sort of incredible processing plant, and then take it over to our monorail so that it can be taken back home again, which is a lot more work than I was expecting to do this morning, considering I've had very little sleep. So if we're going to process all of these logs over here, I'm going to need a little bit more room, because this is going to take a lot of belts. So I need to demolish all of this. I'm sorry, little bee, but I'm going to have to pinch your beehive here. I don't know if this will uh, cause problems. But you can have your beehive over there. But sadly, little bee, your tree has got to go. And so was a substantial amount of your hill. So it was time to get cracking. I flattened even more landscape, laid down a tough foundation, and connected the storage vault to another vault on the foundation I just made. I placed a bunch of conveyors coming out of the new vault with funnels and filters directing different items onto different belts. The idea here is that all of the saplings would be turned into bone meal using compostors, and the logs would be split onto four lanes with a bunch being sawn into strip logs while the rest go through untouched. And anything else coming through would be incinerated, which is basically just sticks. Once this was in and working, I got to building a little train to take the items from the processing area to the gondola station. I created a lovely little engine using cherry wood for decoration with two cars with logs on for decoration. I placed a large gold chest inside one of the cars with a storage interface and then built a gantry at the processing area to put the items into the train, and another at the gondola platform to remove the items and put them into the cable cars. At the other end of the gondola line, I added a bunch of storage drawers in the area below the station and linked them up to an item extraction system that takes the items from the cable cars and puts them into the storage drawers. And after throwing in a floor and a few lights, everything was working and items were coming in fast. Which brings us to now. And man, are we getting a lot of items? This is ridiculous. We are getting absolutely tons of wood, loads of jungle, tons and tons of spruce and plenty of strip stuff, plenty of leaves, plenty of everything. It's all coming through rather nicely. And we've even got 415 bananas. So currently I'm very happy with how all of this is working. As you can see, we've got our little funnel system from there. And that just connects with these cable cars as they come in here and these basically just offload their items downstairs straight into the drawers which is fantastic you can see them coming through now and you can see them coming through because hard at work over at the other end we have chuck being afk here loading the area because i haven't got any chunk loaders in this world i do have a chunk loading mod but i have to fight with us for that and i don't really fancy it right now oh my goodness not again what I, oh for goodness sake i just want to show people what i've done anyway in case you didn't catch it all in that little montagey thing that we just did this is our tree farm it's all working rather nicely our mango mangrove one's working nicely getting us mangrove leaves and mangrove logs this one's working nicely getting us the short tree leaves and the tall tree leaves everything's working rather well our sawing system was working great so we've got three saws that are stripping these logs and the other load of the logs just go off straight down there into the system we've got a composting system for all of the saplings and moss carpets that we don't want and we've even got something for sticks and that all comes into this big old vault here and then it comes straight out of there goes up here and it goes into this massive gold chest we've got inside of this beautiful looking little train i'm quite pleased with this little cherry train and that just goes from there over past these pillagers here and into this little system which takes it all out of there roots it underground and then pokes it up into the cable cars which we'll hopefully see happening in a second if we can survive long enough while it's going on with a bit of luck there we go it just connects like that through the floor and now that's filled up and off it goes. Oh, speaking of off it goes. Get out of it. So whilst we might have not actually done a building for this episode, we have done plenty of building this episode. More than I would normally do. It's taken hours, it's taken ages, but it's all worked out nicely in the end. So next episode, we can get a lovely little building around that, finish this area off, and then move on to our next task. Jeez. Shaders. Oh, yeah, yeah, shaders. Hang on then. Jeez.